This video will focus on how to write an explicit equation for an arithmetic sequence. So an explicit equation is when you're looking for finding the nth term by plugging in n. So what that means then is if you have n, right, so n is the number of the term in the sequence. So the fifth term, the 30th term, the 700th term, whatever it is, that would be what n equals, uh, 5, 30, or 700. T of n represents the nth term itself, the actual value. So what is that number that you actually get out? And so for an arithmetic sequence, what is happening is that you're always going to be adding or subtracting. So let's take a look at some examples. So our first example with a table here, what we have is uh, n values here on the left, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, they're going up by 1 every single time, and t of n starts at 86.5, 83, and 79.5. So when we know that this, this is our table, we have the first term is 86.5. And so as we look at what's happening from one column or one row to the next, you have 86.5 to 83. And what do you do in order to get there? And to do that, you subtract 2.5. And you notice if you subtract 2.5 again, you'll get down to 79.5. So if you subtract 2.5 another time, then you're going to get down to 77. And that would be your fourth term. So when you're writing out what your sequence is for the equation, we use this general formula, which is t of n is equal to a, which is our term 0, plus d, which is the common difference, times n, where n, of course, is the number of the term in the sequence. So a plus d times n. So our common difference here is how your columns or how your sequences are changing from one term to the next. So that in this scenario would be negative 2.5. We also need to figure out what our a value is, uh, which is going to be occur at term 0. So you need to go backwards, which means you would undo that process. To go backwards, you're going to have to add 2.5. And so as we add 2.5, we would see that this would start with a term 0 of 89. And when you're writing your equation then, t of n is going to equal that a value, which is 89. And then since we are subtracting 2.5 each time, I'm going to say my common difference is a negative 2.5. So we have a negative 2.5 times n. Of course, you could switch this order around. You could say negative 2.5n plus 89, because this is a positive 89. Either one away. Either one works. You could also say plus a negative 2.5, because you know, this is a plus here. You might be tempted to do that, but it is easier just to call it a minus right away. In our second example, it's slightly different because we don't have the zero listed here, but as we look at our pattern, our ends are changing by more than just one. They're changing by two, which we're at the point where we can do this with our arithmetic sequences. Because as we notice here on the right side for the outputs, we're going from 8 to 22, and 22 to 16, that is a gain of 14. So you're adding 14 in each row of this table. But this table itself is actually going up by 2 with your ends. So this is plus 2 every single time. So our common difference is really always talking about the common difference for every one end that you're going up from one term to the next. So that means in this scenario that our d value is going to equal a positive 7 because 14 divided by 2 is equal to 7. It's essentially the slope of your table because this is the 14 is the change in y and the positive 2 is the change in x. So 14 divided by 2 is 7. That's the slope. And that is the same thing as common difference, just a slightly different vocabulary because we're working with sequences instead. So 7 is our d value. Now we need to find our a value, which is always going to be term 0. So in this scenario, you're going to have to go backwards to where your term 0 is. And then you just, again, have to undo it. It is, again, 2 away. So that's nice. We can just follow this table. This goes up by 2 every time on the left. So now we're just going to go backwards by 2, which means we're going to undo that by subtracting 14. And if we did that here, you're going to get a negative 6, which means our rule, if we follow what we have above, is t of n is going to equal that term 0, which is negative 6 plus 7n, not 14, but 7 because that's, remember you're doing 14 divided by 2 to get you 7. So in an arithmetic sequence from a table, you make sure that your n values are going up by 1, and if they're not, you check out what they're going up by, 
and you look at where your Y values or your outputs are changing, so 14 in this case, and then that's your common difference.